I'm so excited for the season. I watched the first episode and you are a such a fantastic bachelorette. Wow. What would you say, you know, and you were so excited to be the main character of your story. So how did you kind of navigate having so many men vying for your attention? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I really didn't have a strategy. It was definitely a unique experience. I don't think many people go their lives dating 25 men at once. And so um, it's not like I could read a self-help book about that or anything, but I really just tried to go into it being myself as most as I can um, and really just living in the moment with each of these men. I, I have to say I did, I think I did a really good job of just really focusing in on the conversations that were being had at the time and not letting my mind wander. Yeah, as hard as that must have been. Did you feel like coming off The Bachelor that you were 100% ready to fall in love? Yes, absolutely. You know, obviously coming back from The Bachelor didn't end the way that I wanted it to, but I knew that going into this journey, like, I I want to find love and I, and I want to find my person. And that was something that I've been wanting and ready for, but I definitely feel like after Joey's season, I felt the most ready for it because I learned so much from his season. Definitely. You know, you're, you're so honest and open about your upbringing and your relationship with your family. Did that kind of shape how you were able to open up about people? And like, are you able to trust people a little bit more easily or are you kind of well honed to spot those red flags? Uh, whew, yes and no. I would say based on my previous dating relationship history, probably no. I don't think I saw red flags very well. Um, I because of the way I grew up and not having a role model of love, I've definitely tend, I definitely dated men who weren't good for me because I just didn't understand what love really was. Um, but through those bad experiences, I think I was able to really learn um, what I don't want and to take that as a lesson into like what now I do need in a relationship, you know? Totally. As viewers, should we be looking out for those suitors that are not there for the right reasons? Are we definitely going to be seeing some of those this season? Um, I definitely think there were a few men there that, you know, maybe weren't a good match and maybe weren't ready for a commitment. And that's definitely something to look out for. Definitely something to look out for. You know, you, you teased that this ending is something that's never happened before. I know you can't tell me, obviously, how this season ends, but is there any context that you can kind of give around that? Any tease, even if just a few words of what we can expect? Yeah, I mean, what I will say is that this whole journey, I truly was like on the edge of my seat every day because I was like, something new is happening. Um, and I was just constantly surprised. So I would say like the journey itself included a lot of twists and turns and um, things that I was surprised by and including the ending, yeah. Do you feel like during this journey, you had to make probably one of the hardest decisions or several hard decisions of your life? Yeah, I definitely feel like I had to make several hard decisions through the journey. Just um, it's not easy to hold so many people's hearts in your hands and to have to make those de those decisions. Um, it's not it's not easy at all. Are there was there ever any a time that you were like, I don't know if I can continue doing this. I feel like every bachelor bachelorette goes through that maybe like one week where you're like, I just want to be done. I can't do this anymore. I can't break any people's hearts. I don't know where how to navigate this anymore. Uh, surprisingly, no, I don't think so. I would say that I stayed pretty, pretty level headed through the mm -hmm. process. And I was very, um, you know, focused on my journey and focused on learning and growing more. And so I was never really at a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like you found that ferocious love that you have been looking for? Um, you know, I, re I really can't speak to that, but what I will say is it was a journey that was filled with a lot of growth in terms of self-love for sure. Okay. So, are, but are you happy now? I know, like you said, you, you can't tell us how obviously this ends, but did you find love along the way? Um, I can say that I definitely, you know, um, opened my heart up to a lot of different connections and explored a lot of these connections and the way that things panned out throughout the journey and the way that things ended, um, I'm very happy about, yes. Okay, good. And you're happy now. <laughs> yes, and I'm you, happy now. Yes, good. You know, because like some, you know, not all bachelor, bachelorette relationships work out in the end, but do you feel like you are one that could defy the odds? Um, you know, if I was in a relationship, you know, I'm sure I could, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, what are you most ex excited for people to learn about you? Because like you said, this season really does break the mold. So how do you feel like it does? 
This season definitely breaks the mold in a lot of different ways. But for me, you know, I, I've been thinking about this a lot because I do really feel like I break the mold. Um, starting the journey as a bachelorette, I never saw myself as a bachelorette. I never, because for me, the bachelorette is someone who's so confident, so poised, like can articulate, is articulate, can emotionally like emote and can be vulnerable. And I just didn't know if I could do all that. And I never saw myself as a main character. I never saw myself as someone with that much confidence. And so, um, I, what I really learned is that it's not about fitting a mold of The Bachelorette or a mold of anything. It's about being able to just be yourself the best that you can. Um, and that's really what my whole journey is about, you know, is me being myself and embracing all of my flaws and everything that makes me unique. And I'm the first Asian American Bachelorette. Like you're gonna be seeing a lot of, um, me having conversations with these men about what that means to me and and what my culture means to me. And so things like that is really what I learned to embrace throughout the journey. And I'm so excited for people to see that and to see themselves reflected in that. I love that so much. I think that's wonderful. I got to talk first episode because, you know, a first impression rose. It's one of the most important roses of the season. And you decided to give it to Sam M. What was it about him that really kind of sparked your attention. You had that connection. You had that feral, passionate kiss. Um, so what was it about him that really uh, drew you to him? Yeah, for me, throughout that night, I was just like, who am I going to give the first impression rose to? And I was thinking in my head, I kept thinking back to Sam because he was just, we had such easy flowing conversation it, and it just felt so comfortable with Sam so quickly. And so for me, it was, it was easy to give him that rose because I just felt so comfortable and I knew that there was going to be potential there. Yeah. Did that make out go on so long that you delayed the rose ceremony? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. I don't even know. I, I don't even, <laughs> it was, it was feral for sure. <laughs> it was feral for sure. Yeah. What did you make up? You know, you made it kind of like your strategy. You're like, I'm not going to go in there and kiss a lot of guys on night one. Was that your strategy going into it and watching it back? What did you kind of think of Grant making it almost like his mission to kiss you that night? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I didn't go into the night thinking I don't want to kiss anyone. I went into the night knowing how this process works, how this journey works, how other bachelor and bachelorettes have, have gone throughout their journeys. And for me, a first kiss means a lot. And I need to be able to feel a certain level of comfortability with somebody. And I need to be able to feel like our relationship is at that point for me to want to kiss you. And so I knew that I, in my head, I knew that it, was going, it wasn't going to be everybody on night one, right? Mm -hmm. um, and right. so I really just tried to listen to my gut and whoever I felt most comfortable with, I was like, yes, I'll entertain it. But I knew I wasn't going to kiss everybody. Yeah, definitely. Was it as awkward as it seemed between Jeremy and Brian during that car moment? Was it as oh uncomfortable God. for you as it was for us? A hundred times more <laughs> awkward. I was like, what do I do here? Um, but you know, when things like that happen, I really was just like, I'm going to sit back and just watch this awkward moment happen and see how these boys are going to handle it for themselves, you know? Um, because I'm not really here to like train anybody on how to act in a situation or potty train anybody. So I'm just sitting back and seeing what happens. Was it, is that like a major turnoff for you when it like some of those guys step in like that? Um, it's definitely a major turnoff for me if two guys can't resolve a situation quickly. Like if it's going on for, uh, you know, too long, I'm like, Mm, where are the problem solving skills here? We're at a certain age where it's it's time to learn some problem solving skills. Yeah, definitely. We did see besides Sam and Grant, and we did see some other connections kind of forming. I thought definitely with Marcus and Devin, and especially Devin because he has that big personality that you were looking for. I know you kind of compared him to Pete Davidson. What was it about the, particularly the two of them that really kind of drew you to them as well? And maybe they're kind of maybe they're ones to watch out for this season too. I'm trying to think of my final four in my head already. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put my bets out there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think for sure with them, it was about, it all went back to comfortability. You know, like how easy did conversation flow? Were there awkward pauses? Did I feel like they were being genuine? Um, and so for me, the connections that made it the furthest were the ones that I felt the most comfortable in and just being myself. Yeah. What were your favorite, least favorite limo entrances or Ooh. favorite, maybe most 
questionable then. <laughs> I like this question. Um, <laughs> my favorite limo, well, some of my favorite limo entrances were probably the balloons. Um, I kind of yeah. reminded me of Up, which is like such a nostalgic movie. So immediately, like it was just such a feel good entrance. Um, and then I would definitely say um, the cheeky little entrance was a good one too. You know, I was not expecting anybody to be naked. <laughs> um, was he really naked that whole time? <laughs> he was naked under there the whole time. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was quite a bold move. Um, and then my... Um, not so favorite limo entrance was someone telling me that they had, you know, a really big penis. I was like, whoa, too much too soon, buddy. A little TMI. Yeah. And then, you yeah. know, every season they tell us it's going to be the most dramatic season ever. But if you were to fill in the blank, what would you say? This is the most blank season ever. Um, this is the most twisty and turny season ever. I think okay. there were just a lot of surprises every day. I was like on the edge of my seat. I was like, what else is going to happen today? Like what could possibly happen? Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I was constantly having like new developments in my head where I was like, oh, I didn't see that before. And now I see it or, um, things like that. So it's definitely twisty and turny. <laughs> Yeah. You know, what did you kind of learn about yourself the most throughout this experience? Once, you know, from start to finish, how do you feel like you've changed as a person? Um, I'm definitely more comfortable crying on camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I would say I learned so much. And the biggest things that I think that I look back on is like, for me, I never really had a voice in a relationship. I always felt like I had to um, please the other person and kind of just roll over and, and let them walk all over me sometimes just because I was scared to speak up about certain things. And so throughout this journey, I really wanted to focus on me and, and what I wanted and what I needed in a relationship. And I, need, I needed to find people who allowed me to have a voice and embrace that and, and gave me a platform for that. So um, I really learned how to have that confidence in speaking up for myself. Yeah. And then finally, last question, how did you feel about navigating hometowns? Because we didn't get to see you uh, hometowns in Joey season. So was that something that you were really looking forward to a little nervous about uh you know kind of finally getting to showcase to your family on, on on television um so like the guys hometowns or like my meet the family i guess or... i guess both kind of doing yeah. both since you didn't really have that experience beforehand yeah yeah i mean yeah i i i I didn't have, I didn't go to hometowns last time. So I was very excited to go to hometowns this time around and see what it was all about. But really for me, hometowns was just another look inside their life and like who they really are outside of this bubble, you know, to see them with their families um, and how comfortable they are and who they really are was really great to see. And then also um, to have my family here with me was really important to me and to hear their opinions was really important. Definitely. Well, Jen, I am excited to see this season, your journey unfold, and I hope that you found that ferocious love that you were looking for. Thank you so much. I really appreciate Thank it. You so much. For your time. It's a pleasure. Thank you.